Yeah, less than a week after the deadly siege at the U.S. Capitol, lawmakers now looking to move forward. Some saying that could mean impeachment of President Trump. Joining us this morning, Representative Nancy Mace. Uh, Congresswoman, thank you so much for being here. We do appreciate that. It's been a whirlwind for you as it has mm -hmm. for all Americans. I, I want to start by asking you exactly where you were uh, when those people breached the Capitol and, and kind of what your experience was uh, in the hours that followed. Yeah, well, I was there for the joint session when the vice president presided over it in the afternoon. And then when, uh, when we recessed, when the Senate went into its chamber to debate the objection, um, I started to go back to my office. And at one point, when all this started to go down, I was stuck in a tunnel, underground tunnel under the under the Capitol with about 100 other people. Um, I was with uh, Representative Dan Crenshaw at that time, and yeah. I sort of said, thank God, I'm with someone who's, uh, you know, former military vet. I felt safe because I was right there with him. But there were 100 of us underground in that tunnel, and it was very scary because you felt like a sitting duck. And then at some point, we were able to go back to our offices, and then we were immediately put into lockdown, which I think is about the time when the uh, when these folks started to breach the Capitol and physically go in there. And when we were in lockdown, our doors were locked, the lights were turned out, the shades were drawn, and we were asked to be silent. And all you could hear for hours and hours and hours were the sirens of all the Capitol wow. Police, the National Guard, all the law enforcement coming to the rescue at the Capitol. And um, it was a traumatic event. Um, I had initially planned to have my kids up there because uh, and the school that they're at, they're at right now, mm -hmm. they're only doing virtual, and yeah. so they weren't able to go to school in person. And I thought, hey, wouldn't this be really cool to hang out with Civics mom? Civics lesson, yeah. Civics lesson, history lesson. We made history in this election. Um, it'd be cool to roam the halls of Congress and do your virtual school in my office because I would be doing the work of the people and in the chamber and everything. And thank God I, I, I decided Sunday night when I heard and, and saw the rhetoric leading up to this, I felt really uncomfortable as a, as a mother, as a parent. Yeah. And I, at about, I don't know, four or five o'clock Sunday afternoon, I, I booked the first flight home the next morning for them, which was an eight o'clock, 8.30 flight. And um, I'm just so grateful that they weren't there to Thank witness goodness. this. Thank goodness, yeah, indeed, yeah. that mother's intuition took over. You said you've told other reporters that you felt like a sitting duck during yeah. the siege uh, on the Capitol. That must have been just uh, traumatic. Yeah, it was traumatic because the only thing um, stopping protesters from entering our building were the Capitol Police. And in looking at the video footage that you could see outside and then inside the Capitol that afternoon is that they were outnumbered yeah. and they were unprepared. And um, I, I didn't have a firearm on me because I, I literally just sat for my CWP a couple weeks ago because yeah. of threats I w my office was receiving. Um, I, I got uh, my C CWP application in two weeks ago because of the, the, the rhetoric and the threats on my life leading up to this thing alone, but um, but you did feel like a, a sitting duck, and I'm never I'm not going to let that happen again. I'm not going to be in that situation. Um, our, our nation is deeply divided right now, and and I and I credit both sides with being part of the problem. It's one of the reasons I've been I've been so vocal. You know, this the last seven days have been focused on on of course my own party and the events of Wednesday because this was domestic terrorism. These were people that you you watch the video, and I do not encourage any any viewers to watch the video. It, it right. is traumatic, but you can hear them chanting you know, hang Pence, hang Pence, and, and looking for different members of Congress to do bad things. So you've gone on record saying that this is domestic terrorism, mm -hmm. many people blaming the president for this. Mm -hmm. You say that impeachment shouldn't happen for the president right now. Why yeah, is that? Right now, well, it's a, well, first of all, it's a rushed impeachment. P impeachment should be deliberative. There should be due process according to the Constitution. There's a due process under the law. But to do this in the last 10 days, um, there are other options that are out there that hold the president accountable. Um, Joe Biden will be sworn in on the 20th. And so uh, from a logistic standpoint, if we rush an impeachment on Wednesday and, and uh, supposedly we're going to be voting on this on Wednesday, the U.S. Senate doesn't get the impeachment articles until the 19th. Sure. Um, but that's if they're not held. And Democrats are saying they're going to hold it for 100 days. We need to have but a peaceful transition of power. Is culpable for this? He, he is culpable. Um, I am supporting censure at this moment. I'm, I'm looking at there are um, as there is a censure resolution that's being filed today or tomorrow, probably be more than one that does hold the president accountable. I think it's very important that we do not whisk this under the rug, that we do not turn our backs on history. What happened Wednesday was unforgivable. But you've backed the president during your campaign. You mm -hmm. invoked his name. A I change did. of heart now after you saw what happened? Oh, absolutely. I couldn't. Uh, I had a change of heart before then, but 
um, seeing the rhetoric, seeing the lies that were being told to the American people that, that the vice president could single-handedly overturn the results of the election is just not true. And I, I praise Vice President Mike Pence for standing up last week for truth and telling the American people that that, that could not happen. And the same thing uh, happened with the Electoral College vote. We don't have the ability to do that. And the people were lied to and their, their, their hearts, their minds, and their wallets were taken advantage. Over half a billion dollars were raised to fight voter fraud. And very little of it, hardly any of it, almost zero of it was spent to vote voter fraud. It was a fleecing of the American people. Were lawmakers at all aware of what was going to happen in the lead up to this? You said you might have had some warning signs Sunday night. Were you guys briefed on this at all? Um, no, we were not briefed on any potential violence for Wednesday. I do have, I'm not going to rush to judgment on the Capitol Police. I mean, there are certainly huge indications that, that things were not done when they should have. When was the National Guard called or not called? When, I've, I've heard rumors, I don't like to, 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 to talk in rumor, but there are rumors about when or not when the National Guard was called in. I mean, there are, there are, I have a lot of questions about this. Members of Congress were sitting ducks. There were even, and I heard this last night, there's gonna be so much that's gonna come out in the days and weeks to come, which is why I wanna take the time to, to see what does come out and investigate what happened. But there was a, there was a member of Congress who allegedly uh, put out the whereabouts of our leadership, mm -hmm. a Republican yeah. who, who put out the whereabouts of our leader during all this going down. I mean, I have a lot of questions for a lot of people. Speaking of the people, you mm -hmm. work for the people. A majority of Americans now want President Trump out. You're going to support that, I assume. You work for the people. The majority of them say that he needs to go. Yeah, th th we need, he needs to be held accountable. He needs to be in a position where he never runs for office again, can never hold office again. Uh, the violence was incited by the rhetoric. It not, was not just the president. There were other people, members of my own party, that were at the rally, members of my own party leading up to the rally, the rhetoric that was posted online on social media. I risked, and members of Congress risked their life for a largely ceremonial vote last week. No one should ever fear going to work or going to an event and fear that their life is at risk. And I had to have a very tough conversation with my kids Friday night when I got home and I had a security detail all the way home on Friday night that when mommy goes to work, she's going to be okay and she's going to be safe. And so um, it's sad and it's heartbreaking that this is where we are in our country. I do fear that a rushed impeachment this week is going to pour gasoline on the fire. Um, there are people that are still in severe denial about it. There's going to be, I believe, a lot of information in coming out in the days and weeks ahead, and I want the American people to really see what happens. If you go on my social media, you'll see, especially on my Twitter, I show some revealing things, the videos that, that happened that were there. I want people to witness the destruction that was done. This wasn't patriotism wrapped in the American flag. This was domestic terrorism with intent to kill. Five people died. And when I had to go walk into the chamber to take the vote on the Electoral College, I literally had to walk by, the, by a crime scene where yeah. the blood was still drying the woman who was attacking the Capitol Police. Um, it, it, it's heartbreaking. I never thought I would ever see anything like it in my life, and I hope to never see it again. Troubling times in America. Congresswoman Nancy Mace, thank you so much for being here. Thank you.